We've got a pig in the Bering Sea that just won't budge. We've got a blast furnace bearing down on the heart of the nation as we approach Christmas, threatening to bring record warm temperatures for many of us. And in spite of all of that, there is the chance of a winter storm somewhere in the east as we approach the end of the year and turn the page on 2025. Welcome into the channel, my friends. Jason is my name. I've been looking at all the data this morning, so you don't have to. There's a lot of it to look at with all these AI models and their ensembles now. And so I've looked at all of it and I'm going to show you some maps that I think represent most accurately the pattern that is to come coming up. And we're going to take a look at your Christmas week forecast as well. Fortunately, it's a little less active than this past week has been. If you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please do so. We're almost at 8,000 subscribers on our way to 10 and certainly appreciate the support. If you can, leave a comment in the comment section. Let me know where you're commenting from. And if you think winter is over before it even starts, like so many others I see on social media, I don't think so. So let me know what your thoughts are as well and certainly like the content. The reason I ask you to do all that is because the more we interact with the video and the more of the video you actually watch, then you know that helps YouTube push the video out. It won't do that if we don't get uh, you know any response to it. So anyway, that's why I say that every day. That's why you hear all these YouTube uh, podcasters say to like and watch the video and all of that stuff. And one quick thing before we get started, if you haven't yet done so, check out my friend uh, Weston. His he's got a channel called Weston's Weatherwise, and he does videos as well. Young up and coming, up and comer, and an aspiring meteorologist. And I think he'll do a great job uh, as he continues to grow his channel. So if you get or so inclined. Line. Check him out, my friends. With that, let's jump into the weather. Just going to talk to you a little bit today and kind of show you what's going on. And right now, what's going on is some snow showers up in the northeast, some light snow toward Albany, Ithaca. You're seeing some snow over towards Scranton, Pennsylvania, and then up into the northern north, northern parts of New England. Down here in the southeast, got some cloud cover and some showers as well, approaching Atlanta, Birmingham, and back through central Mississippi, parts of Louisiana, seeing some showers. The heavier rain, of course, is out in the west where we've got the atmospheric river event still underway. Boise getting some heavy rain this morning and of course uh, in the higher elevations we're seeing that snowfall back over toward Eureka, Northern California, San Francisco, Sacramento, Reno, Nevada looking at some rain as well and of course Seattle you're locked in with cloud cover and some showers around. There's your satellite image and of course you can see those clouds that just uh, firing in uh, that fire hose just pumping in all that moisture out of the pacific all the way from hawaii in here into the pacific northwest but take heart the end is in sight but in the meantime all of that energy comes in and translates through the rocky mountains and over into the northern plains and eventually toward the Great Lakes into the Northeast, and you will see that occur. There's some clouds uh, here in the Tennessee Valley up through the Mid-Atlantic and back into the Southeast, and of course down here in the South and Central Plains, you're seeing fog in Texas, a lot of fog down here, but nice in the Four Corners region, or the Southern part of that anyway, and then over here in the Southeast as well, seeing a nice day. Now, here's what is going on with the pattern. We've been looking at the pattern and talking about the pattern, and in the wintertime, we do a lot of pattern chasing, especially when the pattern is not favorable. And right now it is very hostile toward winter weather for much of the country. We've got an Arctic blast that is on its way out and here comes a heat ridge to take its place. And as we get on out here toward this, uh, looking at this morning, Canada is cold. The United States is going to be warming up. This big pig ridge, this pink area up here, high heights, we're looking at the 500 and millibar anomaly map. This is where heights are higher than normal or lower than normal. Where they're higher than normal, they're red and orange. Where they're lower than normal, they're blue and sometimes even greenish on this particular uh, site. And that means cooler than normal temperatures. Where you see these reds and orange, most of the time it means warmer than normal temperatures. And way up here in the Aleutians and over in the Bering Sea, we've got this block and that is dominating the pattern. And watch what happens as we go on out of time. Look at all these blue colors up here in central and eastern Canada as well. Big, big ridge as we get on in here toward the uh, middle of next week or around Christmas. I'm going to be very, very warm in the nation's midsection. Over time, we see things kind of migrate around a little bit. But one of the biggest things that we're watching here is the development of a potential negative NAO. That is ridging, blocking warm colors up here in and around Greenland into Canada. The farther down into eastern Canada, we can push this, the better it will be for central and eastern portion of the country if you like winter weather. When it stays way up there, it doesn't really help the pattern all that much. But what it does, and we talk about this a lot, it traps, it, it slows the flow down, and a lot of times you get these big uh, 
essentially you get a low that sort of sits here underneath this block. It can't really get out and escape. And when you see this off the northeast coast, this is often a signal for east coast winter storms. It allows high pressure to kind of anchor in here and pull cold air out of Canada down the eastern seaboard. So the better uh, representation of this would be to get this block back to the south of Greenland and toward eastern Canada, and it would help this to strengthen and sit here a little bit longer. But we still have our Bering Sea Lucian Ridge kind of feature, and that sits here. And again, we lose way out in time. These ensembles tend to lose the resolution and sort of mute the pattern out, and uh, you get this sort of you know, you, you lose all the features that you would normally see if we were running the deterministic model itself. And so this looks a lot better than the big reds over the country. But again, this isn't a great, great pattern because we still have this big feature here. But look at this a signal for an NAO. That is good as we get way on out in time. That's two weeks out, a little beyond the first of the year. Here's the European model itself. This is the ter deterministic run, and you'll see what I mean. You will be able to see these features show up in high resolution as we get way on out of time. Look at this big NAO developing out here toward the end of December. And what else I want to show you too is this uh, reflection in the southern jet stream. You see these blue colors down here. They sort of work in like this, and eventually they'll translate across the southern portion of the country. That is the southern branch of the jet stream kind of getting active here. And this is going to be key because even if we keep the bad Pacific pattern, if we can get this blocking to develop like this, we get these uh, storm tracks to be a little bit farther south and enough cold air could be around to give a little bit of snow to the south or the eastern seaboard or some icy weather, kind of a mixy type of an event. That absolutely is on the table with this type of a pattern, but it is contingent on getting this big block and having this thing kind of pushed down like this because you get the, the uh, uh, vortex sitting up here like where this is, high pressure will kind of sit in here like this, and you get a southern tracking system, you'll have cold air fed into it, and enough cold air to potentially produce some snow. And this particular run of the European does produce snow, as it turns out. And if we run this thing on out to the very, very end, the Aleutian Ridge, Bering Sea Ridge migrates to the north. You get a little bit of a signal of troughing underneath that. Ridging sets up along, along the west coast. And if we can get this sort of a Rex block, see, look, look at the Pacific Jet just starting to crank up here. If we get this little Rex block like this, you know, a high over a low, that would be very, very good in terms of allowing cold air to just blast in into the uh, uh, central and eastern portion of the country. The GFS actually goes on a little bit further to set up the holy grail of a pattern. Look at this as we get on out toward January the 6th. Big time monster negative NAO with a massive cold air feed out here underneath it. And then your Aleutian Ridge is still way out here and you've almost Rex blocked it again. But this big, big positive, this, this is these reds along the west coast, that's a positive PNA ridge. And when you get that ridge going up, air can come straight down like this and uh, be trapped here under these this block. And if we can get the southern stream continuing to be active, get a storm system to track into that. Got a big time winter storm on your hands. Now this is an operational GFS run and we know out in fantasy land these things are very rarely all that accurate, but this is how I'm showing you this because this is a possibility. It is on the table. This is how you would take the bad Pacific and rearrange it just enough to get a, a really, really good Atlantic side of the equation and have a big cold and winter storm pattern across the United States. This could evolve in this direction. Maybe it will, maybe it won't, but it could, and a lot of models have been showing this big negative NAO. This is contingent on this developing. If it doesn't develop, it's blast furnace. All right, so here you go, and you get way on out uh, toward that time, and look at the temperature anomalies here. This was what uh, you would see if the GFS solution was would be correct in terms of cold weather. So don't write off winter just yet, my friends. Here is the European AI ensemble. Look at this as we get on that to 192 hours. It's actually building a ridge here along uh, eastern Can or western Canada and uh, dropping a trough here in the or, or over here in the northeast. Northeast, you're going to stay cool regardless. And so, you know, e even in the midst of a kind of this big bearing sea block that we've got going on, we're still very apt to see cool air intrusions. Eventually, the European AI ensemble uh, puts a ridge back in the east, and that could happen as well. 
So a lot of options on the table, but I wanted to show you all of this stuff. See, the European Ensemble even agrees, agrees with the European AI. I got that ridge over here as we get in 192 hours toward the end of the year, and that could link up with just provide us just enough of a window to get a winter storm along the East Coast. Um, when you get these ridges going up out West, you got cold air in Canada. It doesn't take a lot as long as you got a little bit of energy in there. Is a reflection of the subtropical jet getting active here, sending energy across the country. So maybe as we get toward the end of the year, the signals are here and the pieces are on the table that we could put them together. Sometimes the pieces aren't on the table. This year, the pieces are on the table. And if we can just get the Bering Sea block to reorient just a little bit, get this NEO to come in and build in a little bit, you could have kind of a window where we could see a winter storm or two and then the pattern reshuffles again, or we could evolve into a super duper great pattern. I mean, there's a lot of options legitimately on the table. So uh, I want you to know that if you're a winter weather fan, take heart. Here's the European operational ensemble, uh, or not the ensemble, it's the operational run that I told you showed some snow in the east. And here it is outside of the northeast. You guys are going to get snow regardless because it's going to be cold up here for the most part regardless of what the pattern looks like down here and the rest up for the rest of us. But the uh, stripe of snow from Oklahoma all the way to North Carolina, even six inches near Atlanta. Wouldn't that be something, Birmingham? So that is European Ensemble. That's way out here toward the end of the run. So please don't take this literally. I'm not forecasting this, but it is a scenario that could be on the table. Uh, so there we have it, folks. Now, taking a look here at what's going on up over the upcoming week. I hope that made sense, by the way. If you have any questions about any of the pattern stuff, let me know. Weather's not an exact science. We know that. It's humbling and we're all right. Sometimes we're all wrong sometimes, but I'm just showing you what the possibilities are. So if you go out on social media, you go to another channel and they're like, winter's over. There's just the stratospheric polar vortex is too strong. Uh, MGO is terrible. We're just not going to have, that's not true. There are a lot of drivers, a lot of things that play into the pattern. And when you have a lot of cold in Canada, like we have very, very cold air, particularly up in Western Canada, it's not going to take very much of a reshuffling of this feature or that feature to bring that in. And if you get an active subtropical jet for a time, which it looks like we're going to, and an NAO, which it looks like we're going to, you can really m maximize your opportunity even within an overall hostile pattern. And uh, in, in any event, there you go. I hope that helps some. And uh, so looking out, over the course of the next couple of days into the Christmas week period, not a lot of alerts today. This was really lit up the other day. Some winter weather alerts here in the Rockies and along the West Coast where you see bulk of your uh, alerts and that is a form of flood watches. We're going to see a lot of snow over the next two weeks out here in the Cascades of Sierra Nevadas as well. There's your atmospheric river coming right in from Hawaii. This is um, precipitable water and you can see those greens and yellows very very high precipitable water values and it's just pointing in toward northern california look at that as we go through tuesday into wednesday and finally we're going to get one uh you know grand finale here uh, crescendo of a storm that moves in and brings a lot of moisture, a lot of rain, a lot of snow to the higher elevations. So we get into Wednesday and Thursday, and then finally we shut it down as we get into next week with all this dry air. You guys could use a break for sure as we get into the weekend. So that is good news. Total precipitation. Some of this is snow now. We're looking at over 10 inches, maybe over as much as a foot in parts of the Sierra Nevada and the coastal range, looking at picking up some more rain up, up in, uh, to the northwest too. But the bulk of the rain is going to be in California where some areas in the higher elevations can see as much as a foot of precipitation. And again, some of that's going to be snow. Again, in the northeast, another signal for uh, precipitation. A lot of that's going to fall in the form of snow in the northern sections as well. And then just a small signal over the next 144 hours. This takes us through next Friday evening out here in the Ohio, Tennessee, Mississippi Valley back into the southern plains. So not a lot of rain is going to fall outside of the Intermountain West and uh, the Four Corners region up to the northwest and then over in the northeast as well. That's where you're looking at the bulk of the precipitation. Here's the total snowfall forecast. Feet of snow. Sierra Nevada's up into the Cascades over here into the Rockies as well as those systems push in. The snow levels are pretty high and they will be lowering as, uh, as we go through time. There you go over southern Canada, really going to rack it up. And then over course into the northeast, can see some snow. This is European Ensemble mean snowfall total. So not looking at a bunch, but, you know, four or five inches. Some of that's going to fall on Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. That'll be nice, right? There you go. So if we take a look here at the 850 millibar temperature anomalies, we get on into Tuesday 
and uh, Tuesday afternoon, look at this. Very, very, very warm. Get into Tuesday and then, went, oh boy, look at this. Wednesday, um, the Chris, Christmas Eve day, we're off the scale. This is 25, potentially as much as 30 degrees above normal. Northeast, look at you hanging on to the uh, cooler than normal temperatures. And here out west, those uh, cool anomalies will punch in there over time too. Christmas Day, just absolutely horrific if you hate or if, if you like winter and cool air for the holidays. There's just no other way to put it. It's just a disaster of a pattern for the holidays. Uh, and then over time, that ridge expands to the east. A northeast, you may warm up a little bit, and then uh, cooler temperatures will push in as we head toward the weekend out west. But this is just going to be a very, very warm week, particularly midweek and beyond as we head on in uh, uh, through time, out through time. There's your total snow depth for Christmas morning. So if you're looking for a white Christmas, you better live high up in the mountains or along the northern tier in the Midwest northern Great Lakes and parts of New England and the Northeast too could still have a little bit of snow on the ground come Christmas morning. So that's anywhere below that line is not looking all that good. Now taking a look here at what's going to happen over the course of the week. Rain and snow out west today. As we head through the night and then the morning hours you're going to see that pick up uh, again in the northern plains. A little bit of snow shower activity through the Great Lakes region as well through Tuesday or Monday night and then we get the, that system amplifying a little bit as we get over into Tuesday. Tuesday morning, snow here in New York, maybe northern Pennsylvania, getting into the northeast where it's colder, showers back through the Tennessee Valley, Ohio Valley, but not a lot of rain there. High pressure building back into the nation's midsection. Here comes that last crescendo of a storm crashing into California on uh, Wednesday. This is um, as we approach Christmas Eve morning. We're still in the overnight hours, too, so let's roll it out here till, to uh, 7 a.m. Christmas Eve morning, snowing up here in the Northeast, raining for a good portion of the day out here in uh, the in in the uh, West. Really going to be some rough travel if you're driving around here Christmas Eve, Christmas Day. There's your systems coming into the West Coast. Just keeps on coming through the day on uh, Christmas and uh, Christmas Day, and then back into the next day. We're looking at more and more in the way of rain the day after Christmas up here in the Northeast and the Northern Mid-Atlantic and the Great Lakes and some snow up there as well where it's colder. And then we get on in toward the end of the day, Friday and the overnight hours. And that is where we'll end that particular map. Now looking at the last map I want to show you is temperatures. Just so you get an idea of what we're looking at. Cool across the north today, not getting above freezing. Across the northern tier, very warm across the south. Temperatures in the 70s, even approaching 80 in spots down in South Texas and Florida. And look at the surge coming in on Monday. We're warming up big time with 70s, making it all the way up into the mid plains, central plains. And then as we head on in toward Tuesday, really warming up across the south. Still chilly across the northern tier. We'll continue to see it uh, be that way until we build it as uh, in toward Christmas Eve and uh, looking at uh, 70s across a wide area here in the South. Christmas Day, 80s in Texas. It is going to feel like a spring day, approaching 70 here in the in the, the Carolinas, certainly in South Carolina, maybe even in toward Raleigh, get up toward 70 on Christmas Day. Only cool spots are across the northern tier. And uh, it's chilly up here in the Midwest, but this is not something that's unusual for you all up here in the Northeast either. So those are your cool spots come Christmas Day, and I'm not even showing you the Northeast. I'm on the wrong view for that. There it is, right there. Look at that. Boom. Northeast. All right. There you have it. All right. So hopefully that helps you out, my friends, and gives you an idea of what's going on as we get on in toward the end of the week. And I'll roll back through these so you can see these because I think it was on the wrong view. In any event, um, we will be back tomorrow with another video. I hope you all have a wonderful Sunday. And uh, keep us in your prayers here at Cold Rain Weather. Got some things going on in my family need prayer about. And certainly appreciate all your support here for this channel. And we'll see you back again tomorrow. Hope you have a wonderful Sunday. Take care, everybody, and God bless.